call to order the meeting of the mayor and board of aldermen. And hang on just a <laughs> Can y'all hear me? We can hear you. Can you hear us? <laughs> Turn the cartoon off. I know, I'm like, I hear something, but it's not here. Okay, I think that that's maybe Rihanna. Hey, Rihanna. <laughs> okay, so the first thing on our agenda tonight is to adopt our agenda. And I have two additions to the agenda. The first is to add appointments of election commissioners. And we will do that at 19A. And then at 20A, we will finish our budget discussion from yesterday. So 21A will be to discuss funding requests and appropriations, just a follow up from our budget meetings that we finished yesterday. So with those two changes, we have a motion to accept the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? All right, um, a quick mayor's report, and we will start tonight, as we often do, with getting an update from Jimmy Allgood on where we are with our um, COVID numbers today. Okay, our numbers for today, uh, our state numbers, we had the biggest increase uh, since this has uh, occurred. 1,635 new cases for the state with 31 new deaths. Our local number is uh, 613 total cases for Lafayette County. That's a 17 case increase from yesterday. And according to today's report, we uh, are at 78 active cases. For our clinic data, our clinics have tested that the ones that are reporting have conducted 2,301 tests, of which 470 have come back positive. And out of that 470, the breakdown is 61.7% are non-residents and 38.3% are residents. All right, thank you, Jimmy. So another, another big jump across the state today. I did speak with Bill Henning, um, our hospital administrator earlier today, and he said that they um, saw an increase over the weekend, but that they were in good shape today. He said that the ICU had capacity, and um, whereas they've been running in the low to mid 20s of active COVID cases for the past week or two, they had seen over the past few days low to mid 30s, but still was not causing any real capacity issues for them. Um, you may have seen that the governor's order over the past week um, said that um, tier one or tier two um, cases should be delayed, and from what I understand, those are your orthopedic and plastic um, cases that, um, so that the basic, the basic cases that require a one night stay. And so, although the hospital was not really seeing the need to do that at our local hospital, they are following that procedure as it was in the governor's orders this week. So, um, I think that's an update on where we are uh, with our COVID numbers. So, at this time, I will ask you to authorize the approval of the minutes of the special meeting of June 29th, June 30th, the recess meeting on July 1st, recess meeting on July 6th, and the regular meeting on July 7th. Move we approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? All right, I'll ask you to authorize the approval of accounts for all city departments. I move we approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And next you'll see that we have our consent agenda. And on that consent agenda, you will see that we have a request, permission to promote one investigator to commander in the Metro Narcotics Division of OCD. And Alex Barb is going to be promoted tonight after your vote. And I believe that Alex is there tonight. Jason, do you see Alex? I don't see him. Yeah, there he there is. There he is. <laughs> Alex, if you want to come out, I'm going to put you on the spot from home. How about that? 
Um, Alex, if you want to come up and say a word, we'd love for you to, and so that the board can identify who you are. And we sure are lucky to have you and excited about this promotion. Alex Fall, here we go. Began my law enforcement career in 1998. Got a little over 22 years. I've been at Oxford for a little over eight years. Been at Metro Narcotics for seven years. I served as interim commander during our last search. <coughs> Excuse me. And I've served as interim since Rod's absence. I just I look forward to trying to move Metro forward. Thank you. Right. Awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. I move we Thank you, the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? All right, at this time we'll consider a request for an extension of the temporary certificate of occupancy for La Quinta Inn on Frontage Road. If Joey Moore is in the audience, you can come forward. Okay, back again. Um, Joey Moore, Williams Engineering, representing the owner of the La Quinta Inn. Um, two weeks ago, I believe this was tabled because there was a question about the building permits. Um, we met with the building department. Um, they explained to us that we do not necessarily need a building permit to build that sidewalk. So as far as I know, we, we can go ahead and build that sidewalk, which is one of the conditions of the temporary CO. Um, without any issue. Um, if there's any other questions or anything like that, I'd be happy to answer. Sorry, my computer froze. The internet's kind of bad with this storm. So, Jay, uh, if y'all can facilitate from there the discussion. <laughs> Your mayor, pro our mayor, pro your mayor pro step out. out. <laughs> I know it. Uh, so, do y'all have any questions for Joey? Unfortunately, I couldn't hear all of what he said. But are there any questions? What about the drainage issue with Province Park? Is that related to this at all, Hollis? Is somebody put it, give us some guidance on that? It, it is two separate issues. He's asking for a temp seal just for the sidewalk and landscape. Okay. Uh, before he gets a final seal, we would have to. Right, okay. All right, I move that we um, approve the temporary CO for La Quinta Inn. Second. All right, motion is second. Are there any other questions? Ho Ho Mayor uh, Hollis is asking for how long, because I was just about to ask how long is usually a temporary CO? The original was six months, and I think we're asking for another six months. So, and, and I know why we did that. That petition for 180 is the planning station is a small Well, just so the board knows, the owner has, we've got a contract set up for the sidewalk to be completed. Um, they gave us a rough start date of the middle of next month. So that's, that's what we're planning on, the sidewalk work. Now the planning's, you know, maybe, I don't know, October. I'm not a landscape guy. I don't know when the best time of year. Well, Joey, to cool off enough. you sat here last time and told us that, I mean, just because there's a contract set up doesn't mean it is gonna get done from what has happened with the, with this project. I mean, there's sure. people that hadn't been paid. There's, there's, there's just a Just like with anything else, sure. Right, but I mean, there's, there's some serious issues going on with this project. So I, I would like to make it as short as possible to make sure it all gets done. How short do you want it, John, so I can amend my motion? Um, what do we We're in July. I mean, what do you, Mark? What is? What is? What is pl when do you think? I would, I would say ninety to one hundred twenty. Okay, I think we ought to go with. Five months. Five months. Okay. For five months. Sure. 
All right, so that's a motion. Is there a second? Preston. Second. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank, thank you. you. Next, we'll consider a change order number one for the soccer field number one project at M Trade Park. Is Brad Freeman there to present this or Bart? Hey, Mayor. I'm here. Hey, Brad. Hey. Um, all the information was contained in y'all's packet. This is for this uh, FEMA funded project, and we're just going to beef up the, uh, the drainage in around that area. Um, so we're requesting a change order in the amount of $10,860.31 for this project. Hopefully that'll help us not have this problem again. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. We can have. And we again. can have. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, any opposed? All right, thank you. Thank you, Brad. Next, we'll consider a request from ICM for a waiver of the fee for a 30-day temporary certificate of occupancy for the new Lafayette Elementary School. Chris Carter? Hi, good evening. Um, Lafayette Elementary School, Casey, yes, Casey Rogers is here with ICM. They've requested the uh, waiver of fees for the temporary CO for Lafayette Elementary. Lafayette is, uh, they're, they're gonna be lacking just a little bit more than just landscaping. So based on the ordinance that was adopted about a year or so ago that put them in the category of a 15% uh, of the original permit fee for the temporary CO. Uh, to break that down into dollars, it's $13,226 and some change for a 30-day temporary CO for a Lafayette school. He's, my understanding, Casey, is the virus has got your electrical contractor kind of behind schedule. Uh, he wasn't able to get 100%. What he is lacking is outside lighting for the site. The, the, the building itself will be 100%. The fire marshal was out there today. Uh, we were out there yesterday doing our building inspection and everything's checking out good with the building. It's just, uh, he just likes finishing on the outside. Okay, so the, the inspection for the permanent CO is essentially done? Essentially, yes, ma'am. We've looked at all the life safety components and everything uh, that, that would, obviously, if there was anything, uh, any life safety issues out there, we wouldn't be having this discussion. And if he, if they were not requesting um, a temporary CO, the fee for the permanent CO was already built into the- It is, it okay. is. The permanent CO was paid for with the building permit. Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm gonna make a motion that we approve waiving that fee. I'll second. All right, with a motion, second, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you ask you to consider change order number one for the AMI water meter project. We missed, Hold on, we got, we got uh, Central yeah. Elementary. I'm sorry. Sorry, I skipped one. Consider a request for ICM for waiver of the fee for 30-day temporary certificate of occupancy for the new Central Elementary School. Sorry. Similar circumstance, this one, all they'll be lacking is landscaping on the outside. Move, we approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Now we'll consider change order number one for the AMI water meter project. Rob? Hi. How are you? Hey, I'm well. Uh, good evening. And uh, this item is for the automated meter infrastructure project for water meters at Oxford Utilities. We, if you recall, we um, selected a contractor, got the bids all set up, and then the pandemic hit right about the time they were starting the project. We pushed the pause button in March, um, and we pushed on pause on January 2nd. They're, um, they're staging right now, getting ready to do a mass change out, but they would like, and they're asking for those 122 days back that they missed for the last four months. We didn't really want the contractors in people's yards when the heat of the pandemic was going on and everyone was real leery of having um, outsiders near, near them. So we uh, 
and we didn't want to spend the money at that time until we saw how the budget shook out. So just asking for 122 days, no contract change other um, than the days, no price increase or anything. All right, any questions? Move, move, approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you, Rob. First reading of the proposed ordinance amending Chapter 2, Administration, Article 8, Section 2 236, Composition and Terms of the City of Oxford Code of Ordinances regarding the Historic Properties Commission. Kate? Hi, everyone. Um, we're proposing a slight change to the Historic Properties Commission ordinance. So, you guys know they're an advisory commission to the city on the management of our historic properties. Um, we're simply proposing that we go from five commissioners to four on the board. Okay. All right. And so that is a first reading. We'll have a second reading and public hearing at our next meeting. Does anybody have a question? Is it, uh, was it somebody from each of the properties before? before? No, ma'am. So the chairman, Jim Pryor, is retiring and basically his duties, we sort of have been in a hybrid role, he and I, paying the bills, managing the properties and all of that, and that work will go to me. There will still be a representative from each of the properties from on the board. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> all right. Any other questions? Thank you, Kate. All right. Um, request permission to accept the Mississippi Department of Archives and History CLG grant for the resurvey of the historic district. Um, so we received a grant from the Department of Archives and History. It's a matching grant. We'll pay 50%, which is $7,500, and the Department of Archives and History will match that. And that's to resurvey um, four of our historic districts. Um, we're trying to keep those updated, and the surveys are around 20 years old. So um, anyway, we hope to accept that grant and get that work started. And was this in the budget? This yes, ma'am. Okay. I move that we approve it. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. Consider a request from Mac Monty for K2640 to modify the Lamar TND regulating plan for phase two to change the multifamily mansion flat to single family homes for property located north of Cincinnati Boulevard and east of Jenny Avenue, further identified as PPIN 39051. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think that this is a, um, a fairly easy request, although the report looks a lot more complicated than what it really is. Uh, uh, if you recall, there was a section in phase two of the Lamar TND, which is the, the south side where all the housing is being constructed at, uh, currently, that included uh, multifamily mansion flats that each unit actually contained uh, five units within them. And uh, I think with um, uh, you know, the current market right now with uh, multifamily. Mr. Monteith has, uh, has decided that he would like to request a modification to change or to at least allow single family homes to be constructed there. Um, as originally approved, uh, there were a total of 318 units. And so uh, this reduction, um, you know, the, the additional units that were in those multifamily would be spread out in the, uh, the way of additional single family attached or detached housing throughout the, uh, throughout the development. So it's, a, I think, a fairly um, minor request. Make a motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, first reading of the proposed ordinance for case 2642 to amend the City of Oxford Land Development Code, Ben. Thank you. Uh, we're proposing a few modifications to the Land Development Code, uh, and this is a first reading, so I'll, I'll walk through these uh, these modifications. In Article 2, we're proposing a, uh, a modification to the Build 2 line maximum to allow uh, an additional eight feet. Uh, you know, the intent of still bringing buildings closer to the street is still there, but this allows for us to, uh, to meet all the requirements of all the different city departments. Uh, we do not believe that this would be uh, um, we, we believe it to be aligned with what the original intent is. Uh, in Article 3, we are proposing a modification to the medical facility standards. Uh, uh, in particular, in uh, TNB, the TNB district, it limited medical facilities to no more than uh, 7,000 square feet. Um, and um, as we have discussed through Ordinance Review Committee, 
um, that use is, uh, I would probably say, less intense than a grocery store. And a grocery store, um, actually, you could have a larger grocery store than you could a medical facility. And so the standards, uh, as we're proposing to modify them, actually are, are aligned with those standards for the, uh, the grocery store. So in essence, in that neighborhood business district, you could request a medical facility, uh, actually, they're permitted by special use up to 25,000 square feet. Anything in excess of that would require a special exception. Any questions on that? Um, in Article uh, in Article Three, we are proposing another modification to the accessory uses and structures. Uh, in particular, we uh, were proposing to allow uh, accessory structures to be located in a side yard by special exception. We just want to ensure uh, through that special exception that they are. Um, you know, behind the front building line, uh, but it's actually quite common for a carport to be located in a side yard, uh, uh, but towards the rear portion of the lot. And then um, uh, lastly, in Article 10, we're proposing uh, the definition of a second story. This has come up a few times where, uh, especially in the traditional neighborhood business district where we do require um, a second story and what does that mean? And our interpretation has been at least 51% of the ground floor um, should be uh, occupiable, usable, or functional space on the second floor. So we've added that definition, so it's no longer an interpretation, it would be codified. Any questions? Thank you. No. Any questions? No. no. Thank you all. Thanks. All right. All right, discuss recommendations from the Downtown Parking Advisory Commission to resume all paid off-street parking and monthly parking permits effective Monday, August 3rd. Matt, who's that, Matt? Matt, are you on the call? Matt, are you on the call? Yes. Okay. I'm on the call. Okay, go ahead, Matt. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Can you, can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so just, well, we can't hear you now. You might want to step outside. So garbled. Maybe we just read the memo. Um, the downtown parking and Matt, 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 we cannot hear you. It's breaking up. Well, we know. We um, so you, you all have the, um, you all have the memo before you, stating that during the monthly meeting that the commission made the recommendation to resume paid parking in our all street parking lots and downtown area. And Hey, Matt. You, you can hang up. Yeah, go ahead. I'll make a motion we approve. I'll second. Okay. okay, so that means that all of our paid parking, I want to make sure that the public that's watching understands what we're voting on. That means that all of our paid parking, our lots, our off-street lots and permits and that kind of thing um, would all go back to regular rates Monday, August 3rd. Okay, so there's a motion by Alderman Morgan. Was there a second? Second by Bailey. All right, all quick in question. favor? Quick question. Quick question from Rick. Okay. What are we going to do with our curbside parking at this time? Is that going to change also? You're talking about the curbside pickup area? Correct. I, I was not, in, I did not intend for those to be changed for right now, but certainly that's up for discussion. I, don't, I agree. Uh, no, I, just I don't think we should sure. change them. Don't change it. I yeah. think we're all in agreement not to change them. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure nothing okay. was changing. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So there was a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Request permission to sign contract update for passport operating system for our open parking ecosystem. Since we can't hear um, Matt, um, Bart, do you are you there where you can facilitate? He is. 
I am, and you've got a copy of the amended agreement in your packet. The open I'm ecosystem. Trying. The open ecosystem is just an addition that Passport is now offering. I believe Pope has reviewed the contract. I think I saw some emails over the last couple of weeks going back and forth, uh, and Matt has recommended that we approve. Move we approve. Hey, I'm on the I'm on the phone now. If y'all need any explanation on that, I'm sorry. Second. It's okay. Anybody have any questions for Matt? No. All right. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? All right. Second reading of public hearing of revised ordinance parading public assemblies and special events. Chief McCutcheon. Um, after the last meeting, we made a couple of adjustments on that, um, and I'll read that to you. It says it shall be unlawful for any person participating in any parade or public assembly to carry or possess any length of lumber, wood, plastic, or PVC, or similar material for any purpose, such as displaying a sign, poster, flag, plaque, or notice, etc., unless such object, object is one fourth inch or less in thickness or two inches or less in width, or if not generally rectangular in shape, which such object shall not exceed three-fourths inch in the thickness and dimensions. It shall be unlawful for any person participating in any parade permit, uh, parade or public assembly to carry or possess any length of metal. So we added flag, we cleared all metal objects uh, in that permit, in the, in the wording. All right, are there any questions? And this is a second reading and public hearing. Are there any um, members of the public who would like to comment that are there tonight? No, Nobody. Nobody's here. All right. All right. Are there any questions uh, by the board? Or I have not received any feedback on this. So, no. I mean, from the public. I would think, due to public safety, we can vote on this tonight. Yeah, I think so. And implement it. Can we implement it immediately due to public safety? Yeah, you, you can, but you've got to make an additional finding, and that's the unanimous necessary issue. Okay. The default is that it gets published so the public knows about it. Mm -hmm. so. I'd, I'd like to make the motion that we uh, for first vote on this tonight and then forego the 30 days due to the additional findings that it is uh, necessity to keep the public uh, safe at this time. Yes. Second. All right. Any other questions? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you, Chief. 19 is consider change order number two for legacy construction services for the Oxford Fire Department station number two. Mark? Thanks, Mayor. As promised at the last regular meeting, I have a credit here of $19,299 for um, a change order for a, a grinder pump. So that brings the total contract amount 13417 under the original contract amount. Good so, job. Second. Second. Thank you all. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, and then we added that 19A to add the appointment of elections commissioners. We actually need five elections commissioners, so I would encourage anyone in the public who is interested in serving your community in this way. It is a very important role. We have three that have shown interest, and um, we will be. I'll be recommending to you tonight. But I do encourage anyone and the board as well to help us find two other folks to serve as elections commissioners. Um, tonight, I would recommend to you Catherine Smith, Jim Stevens, and Kathy Marshall Smith, who have all three generously um, said that they would serve in this role. I move that we authorize approval of those commissioners. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? All right, at this time I will ask the board to consider an executive session. So moved. Second. Uh -oh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the board will now consider an executive session.
All right, so um, there's a motion to be made on discussion in executive session to bring back an employee, a part-time employee from Oxford Utilities. Is there a motion? There's a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, um, you've got your detailed funding request and appropriation before you. And Ashley and Jesse, I got them to break it down. So thank you, Ashley, for this presentation so that you all can see the differences in the things that come out of this promotions line. So you see the dues that we pay each year, and that includes EDF. Then you see the nonprofit request, and those are the ones that we heard from yesterday. You see the other agency requests, because the library and things are a little different. The Early Childhood Literacy Initiative that we actually committed to um, a few months back. And then you see the miscellaneous. So um, I think that's a great way to look down that. And then you, you can see there at the bottom how these things are budgeted. Like, yeah, it's presented to us yesterday, but they're funded out of 2%. They're not funded out of general operating. So I just wanted y'all to see those things. You know, my thought on um, is just let's go down this list if that's good with y'all. I'm sorry, what was Say the last that again. Thing you said? Just go down the list. Um, I thought we'll just, we'll just go down the list. Can y'all not hear me well? Yeah, I mean, yeah, in, in, in an effort to, uh, I don't want to say to shorten it, but I mean, I think we were pretty much good with everything except like one or two of the, of the things like interfaith and CASA. Um, well, interfaith doesn't get anything. Well, it, this was my point on interfaith. I asked Jeff McCutcheon, what organization partnered with PD the most and who did we utilize services from? And he said that Family Crisis, Interfaith Compassion Ministries, and Communicare are the three that are critical to our success. And so in my mind, um, Interface, although they have not requested, would be, I think, a, a great organization for us to donate to. Well, Every time we have somebody that's homeless or anything, that's who PD calls and they come save the day with no homeless shelter. Well, why don't we just go through the nonprofits one by one? Just, I have one question on EDF. Is that the same split we did last year, the 37.5 and the 37.5? Okay. Yes. Well, we can. As far as interfaith, do we need to, um, if we donate to them, do we need to take it out of some someplace else or do we have extra funding? You know, I'm not big on doing too much to nonprofits. I think we kind of need to limit it. We can shuffle it around, but I don't know. I'm, I, thought, I thought Yak asked for Five thousand dollars less. They asked for they forty. They did. They did, but that is two percent tourism money. We can't give that two percent money to someone else. Could, I mean, to another could nonprofit. We, could we tell them we left that five thousand in there, but for the Oxford Community Market, not to charge them rent? I don't think we that's, can do that. That's it, or they yep. could choose not.